I think the High Meadows Way really involves catering to the needs of the child, each individual child, and meeting somewhere in the middle between what we need to accomplish and what they need, and also including the needs of all the campers together, just finding that happy medium and getting them all to be interested and learn something and gain something from their experiences. I think the High Meadows way is respect. And I think we, we try to emphasize that that doesn't just uh, adhere to respect of other people. It adheres to respect of animals, respect of nature. And I think that comes across in you know, composting and recycling and trying to not pack as much trash in our lunches. But for me, what has been special when you're talking about the respect between people, it's not just amongst your peers. Um, so I, I always had a lot of respect for my counselors and my teachers, uh, a lot of whom are currently some of my best friends. And then I think teachers and counselors also have a lot of respect for campers. Uh, that relationship, I think, is something that I've not found in a lot of other places and has helped me when I've gone to other schools and other work environments um, to foster that type of respect and that type of relationship. The biggest thing I think is that we meet people where they are. We, f we find out where someone is and we meet them at that level and see where they want to go from there. Um, we cater to individual needs and you know we're not a competitive camp, we're a growth mindset camp and so it's about someone setting foot on campus, whether it's the first time or the 50th time, and figuring out where they're at and where their skill levels are and where their skill deficits are and, and how to bridge that gap, how to give them the confidence, how to encourage them to try new things, how, how can we take this mistake that was made and learn from it and do better next time. We are doing creation stations and we brainstorm categories that we can create and now we're working in groups so that everybody can come up with some kind of rocket and where it transports different items to. So they're making a robot that's going to fly in the baseball bat shape rocket with robot jets on the end. We give them a little bit of, of freedom that I don't think that they get and we encourage free play. We give them structured f free play activity so that they have to be resourceful on their own. Um, I don't think kids nowadays get a lot of time to just play with things or to go be on a playground and we're taking away their ability to be self-sufficient and so at camp we try to give them a little bit of that back whilst, while giving them the tools to experience the world around them in a creative and positive way. A couple more sticks over here guys for our teepee. You guys feel like that would be a good idea? Having a true growth mindset allows for mistakes and allows for growth in a way that I don't think is readily accessible anymore. All right, so let's go ahead and start feeding this fire because it's gonna burn really quickly with that breeze. They get those raspberries and blackberries all mushed up together. It allows for our program to be inclusive it allows for kids and staff members to get experiences that they wouldn't normally have because we're a diverse unit. The camp started 1973 and it came from a group of counselors who were actually working at Chattahoochee Camp, which is located at the property that Kingfisher 
and the Chattahoochee Nature Center is currently. That camp was being run by the Holdens and uh, they were getting ready to sell the property and Jay Dickerson, who was affiliated with their camp, had run other adventure camps. He was working at Westminster but wanted to create a satellite camp through Love It. He was up there one day talking to them about that possibility at the Chattahoochee camp and Bill Crawford learned of his interest of doing this and Bill was also interested in creating a camp. Bill approached Jay about doing a camp together, uh, working to find a place and come up with you know, what it would look like. That is how they ended up creating this camp. They had both sort of been involved with camps before but they wanted to branch out and do it their own way. They brought on Jody Holden, who was running a school at the time already near the, the Chattahoochee camp. So she already had an established base of teachers um, and philosophy and everything else. And so they brought her on as well. So the basic structure of camp is we have three three-week sessions of traditional outdoor summer camp programming and we serve ages pre-k through rising ninth graders and those are broken up into different units our youngest campers are ants and they're four years old or rising kindergartners and their programming they're a little more independent from the rest of camp whereas their counselors teach all their classes and do all their instruction but they have playground time they do crafts swimming every day nature sports pony rides our next oldest age group is grasshoppers and they're all rising kindergartners and they do a lot of similar programming they do pony rides as well swimming every day sports nature traditions unit discovery the next group is juniors who are rising first and second graders. That's our largest unit here at camp. Similar programming to grasshoppers. Both grasshoppers and juniors are broken up into small groups, about 12 to 14 kids with two counselors that rotate around to all the classes with them. After juniors uh, come super seniors and they're rising third and fourth graders. Programming wise they do a few things different than juniors and grasshoppers. They begin archery and woodworking at that age um, but they don't do pony rides any longer. But they're also in small groups of about 12 to 14 that rotate around with, with two counselors. The biggest programming change comes with our next age group, which is Senior Quest. They're rising fifth and sixth graders. And at that age, you become a little more independent in that you get your own individualized class schedule. They select their activities and have their own schedule, and they rotate by themselves from class to class. And that's the same for the, our oldest age group, which is Senior Legend. They're rising seventh through rising ninth graders. And they also rotate around on their own. Those two oldest age groups also can choose to participate in the Knighthood program, which is a program where they can achieve different levels, four different levels in each class. Those four levels are Page, Squire, Sentry, and Knight. And if they get enough levels in a certain number of classes, they can become an overall Page, Squire, Sentry, or Knight. Okay, right now I'm making a broken right arrow collage. It is a requirement for Knight and Arts and Crafts. Uh, it's a cool project. It's where you cut up a bunch of pieces of paper and kind of form an artistic piece with it. Then you have to incorporate arrows from the archery, of course. And mine is kind of like the point, the center, which is like really look at. It's this middle piece right here. And everything else like evolves around it. That's why I have the arrows and closing it in. And uh, for night, you have to do seven requirements. This is one of the seven. Our environment sets us apart here from other camps. We're on 40 acres, not many other camps have the land we have and can utilize it like we utilize it. 
We also gear activities specific for age groups that help them achieve their goals for their age. And in the older camps and seniors, they work on a knighthood program. And the younger camps kind of set them up to achieve those goals and it's just a big accomplishment for all the kids. So when kids come here for the first time, they touch a bow and arrows for the first time, they typically have no experience and, and no real skill when it comes to archery. It's cool to see them pick up something for the very first time. It's foreign to them, they don't know how to hold it, they don't know how to stand the right way. Without the right instruction, they can't do it safely. Working with our staff and with campers who have done it before and CITs, they get a chance to get quite a bit better in a three-week session. It's really cool to see how much better they get. And obviously, just doing something regularly and building a skill would absolutely result in an increase in confidence for someone. start a ropes class basically on the ground. We get to know each other, we form bonds, we become a team. <laughs> so we team build for a while and then before we even get up into the trees, we all feel comfortable with one another. I know that the other counselors, the campers, they're there to support me. They know that I'm there and the other campers are all there to support them. Step on up here with me. Can you hold on to these things? Nice, Grace. That was an awesome self-rescue. Look, you're clipped in and locked here. So it's pretty cool by the time somebody's up in a tree and we may have kids that are afraid of heights, but they know that when they go up into the tree to do the zip line, or when they go to um, cross one of the ropes, one of the high elements, that nobody's there to discourage them, to give them a hard time. And so we'll have kids who get up on the zip platform and sit up there for 15 minutes. We're, you know, 15 minutes into the next class and every single member of the team has decided to stick around and, and wait for this one person to go. And nobody's going to force them, but we're there to support that person if they want to go. And so when they finally go, it's cool. It's, it's something that feels good for everyone involved. With arts and crafts, it's not like normal crafts that you'd think of. They're um, more uh, skill-based, and you definitely learn a lot of hand-eye coordination with those. And you learn patience. That's a big thing you'll learn, because a lot of those things, those projects you have to do, especially for the knighthood program, take extremely long. And if you don't have patience, you won't be able to finish them. But that's one thing that they'll learn, definitely patience. A lot of these activities, especially with the ponies and with the younger kids, it's things they don't get to do every day. You don't get to ride a pony or shoot a bow and arrow or go in a canoe or go down ropes course. You don't get to do that every day. <laughs> it's something that you get to experience and like triumph yourself. It might be scary to some people. I know I'm, I was scared of animals and scared of heights. And then I got to do that here and get over those fears with my friends. And I think that's really cool. When you step back and look at the big picture of High Meadows Camp, it's about inviting any child onto our campus and giving them the opportunity to explore and use their imagination and truly be themselves and play. And as an adult watching that kind of childhood joy, that comes out of us too. So it's a constant circle of self-improvement and trying new things and taking risks and sharing that with each other, laughing at each other, and truly enjoying every single day of camp. As a counselor, we know we've done our job when a camper gets on the bus at the end of the day or in carpool 
can barely speak to the parent, gets home, still covered in tie-dye and glitter and googly eyes, hits the bed knowing I just had the best day at camp, but then wakes up the next day trying to top it. I think one of the great things about High Meadows Camp is that we're a family and people like it so much that they keep coming back and our campers become counselors in training and the counselors in training become staff members and we have this great fostering of knowledge and sharing of experiences that again that circle where we keep coming back to share the main goals that our founders had so long ago and we continue every day every summer to bring it back the kids come back the staff comes back and it continues on